How you doing guys? Today we have a bunch of parts up on the workbench, specifically the uh, gear reduction steering system off a mid-90s uh, Wheel Horse 520 tractor. And the reason for that is I've always kind of wanted to snake one of these steering systems into my little mule, my 857. Now to get one of these uh, steering systems into the short frame mid-60s tractor, uh, there's a little bit of modification here and there. Now, putting one of these steering systems into a uh, early model wheel horse tractor from the 60s and the 70s, and even the 80s for that matter, is nothing new. But I don't see too many of these steering systems in a short frame tractor, the 857, the 656, things to that nature. So I am going to embark on trying to install one of these steering systems in the tractor. The one thing I am not going to use from the 520 is the forward swept axle, basically the cast iron axle that was on the 520 for a couple of reasons. One, uh, this is a standard mid 60s cast iron straight style um, front axle. The forward swept axle of the 520 actually forward swept, it came forward and it was wider uh, from spindle to spindle than a standard 60s tractor. And on my short frame tractor specifically, I think that would look really, really kind of hokey. So I don't want that kind of really wide, crazy look. So I'm going to modify, this one's already been modified and I'll show you that in a later video, but modify this front axle, standard front axle to accept the larger, heavier duty 520 front spindles. Now specifically what makes up one of these steering systems. Really, it comes down to a that thing right there. Instead of the steering shaft coming from the steering wheel and going right to the sun gear uh, on 90% of all wheel horse tractors, wheel horse came up with this design to kind of gear reduce the steering. So in other words, we have a small gear on the steering shaft. The steering wheel would be up here on this end to a big gear, to a small gear, to a big gear. And that reduction, kind of like a bicycle, small gear in the front, big on the back, gives you uh, less, I guess, less pressure needed to steer the tractor. It was, in my opinion, their way of coming up with a pseudo power steering feel. In other words, gave you a lighter feel uh, from of the steering. Now, there is a drawback to this system. One where a standard steering system would only require, let's say, uh, three quarters of a turn of a steering wheel in order to go lock to lock. This one would be more like one and a half times. So you're going to have to turn the steering wheel more in order to go from lock to lock. I really don't care about that. I just wanted the gear reduction steering and the lighter feel. Now, overall, what are the parts that we have here? We have obviously the steering shaft. This goes from the steering wheel down to this gear, the input gear, I guess if you want to call it. There's this stand, cast iron stand, that has the two gear reduction or the gears for the gear reduction. There's a standard, or I should say it looks standard, lower steering rod which goes underneath the motor to the front wheels. It has the little lower steering rod, um, I guess, mount, if you want to call it. It's part of this entire stand system. There are four bolts that hold the stand down instead of the typical two bolts, one on this side, one on that side. Uh, so we will have to modify the frame in the sense that we have to drill an extra hole on both sides to mount this. But the front holes mount in the original holes in the frame. So we should only have to do one additional or two additional holes in the back. These shims go between this block and the actual stand. And what that does is it sets the gear clearance between the little gear and the sun gear. And we'll talk about that later in another video. Basically, we have a heavy duty lower steering arm, as you can see. This will have to be modified in the sense that the 520 is a much longer tractor. It's a long frame, if you want to call it, or it's reminiscent of the long frame. So this is too long for the 857. I'm going to have to cut this down. There is some wear at the end of the pin. So I'm going to just cut it here, cut it here, remove these, remove this gear, remove this piece with the lower stand for the uh, tie rods 
and I went to Tractor Supply and I have a new piece of bar stock that I'll make my custom length and then re-weld these pieces on so that way I didn't kind of nip it and you know didn't cut it and shorten it it'll, it'll be all one solid piece next is the 520 heavy duty tie rods as you can see they're kind of like uh, like a ball joint kind of situation um, I do have some new booties for those and I'll get uh, I'll get to that in a second but these are in real good shape nice and clean we have the heavy duty one inch uh, 520 front spindles that's one instead of a standard or a sta I don't want to say standard but most wheel horses have a three-quarter inch uh, spindle with a three-quarter inch stand the 520 is a one inch uh, spindle with a one inch stand it has tapered roller bearings and uses a front rim reminiscent of a small boat trailer or like a trailer wheel and we'll get to those in just a second um, actually we can just jump right to them the front wheel rims are total junk. Um, I should have been, I'll be honest, I should have been a little bit more cognizant of that. I tried to lead fill the pits in because I like to have my wheels powder coated. That ended up being a disaster. It just, it just didn't work out. I got the other rim. It's downstairs. But essentially the rims are junk. So I sourced a new or a new to me set of 520 front rims. They're going to be powder coat quality. So I'll basically have to take the tires off, take the bearings out, clean it all up, get all the grease out of them, and drop them off to the powder coater. I also picked up a set of 520 rear rims. These are true eight and a half inch uh, wide. Eight and a half? I believe they're they're true eight and a half or true eight. Let's take a look. They're marked, they're marked right there. Let's take a look. What's that wheel say? Uh, yeah, 12 eight and a half. And these were made in January 3rd of 1995. Interesting. Um. They're true eight and a half instead of, you know, from inside bead to inside bead. So they're about an inch wider than the rims I have on the little mule right now. Um, again, powder coat quality. Once I get my front rims, I will drop all four of these off to get powder coated black to match the rims on the little mule right now. Uh, for new parts, in order to get this whole system up and running, uh, I did have to put... I do have a couple new bearings. Oh, you can see it right there. I got a couple new little steel uh, thrust bushings I put in this. It's not set yet, but we'll talk about that in another video. These, um, I guess, are thrust thrust bearings. This is a this is a part that is a 520 part. It goes right here on the spindle. So when you put the spindle in the the axle, it actually sits on those little roller bearings. Uh, on the top and the bottom of those are steel thrust washers, uh, aids in, I guess, making it work smoother. So I got four new ones of those, got two new ones of these. The Toro part number is 9865. Uh, I got some new snap rings, one inch snap rings to snap ring the spindle into place. Uh, I may have to make a small spacer that goes on top of this because this is pretty tall comparative to the 60s uh, axle. But again, that's for future project time. As I indicated, I got new little boots for my tie rod ends. There's two a piece in those. I got, uh, where I got, I got one at Advanced Auto and one at AutoZone. Either way, it's in the help aisle. So that should be fine. Now, when it comes to the front rims, I got all new roller bearings. Um, so in this kit, there's four new roller tapered roller bearings for a one inch shaft. It does come with new races. I'm hoping that I'm not going to need the races for my new rims. It comes with the appropriate grease seals or yeah, grease seals, oil seals for those things. And it has brand new trailer style bearing covers so and i i called my friend jeff bezos over at amazon he was nice enough to send them to me so if you have a 520 that needs some new uh bearings this is the item that will do it for you uh part number 280451-2 for a one inch spindle and i believe it was like 24 bucks for this entire thing I, what do I, have? I don't think i have anything else Whew. That's a quickie, just to kind of go over all the parts. 
Now in my next video, we'll actually take a look at the tractor and discuss what's actually going to need to be physically done to the tractor in order to get this in. So I hope you find this interesting. Hopefully you're going to want to see this get developed and put into the tractor. Uh, as always, please subscribe, ring the bell for the notifications. If you like the video and you found it interesting and you're looking forward to this install, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.